anywhere morning breaks, this true wonder of nature rarely disappoints. But nothing compares to the annual ritual below the Sierra Nevada. Everybody has their favorite place. This is mine. <laughs> this is mine. Larry Maurice, a cowboy, a wrangler, a poet, a man truly in love with the Old West. For two decades, he has led this sunrise tour, a popular event at the Lone Pine Film Festival. They rise early and begin the trek, the pilgrimage, into this magical place called the Alabama Hills below Mount Whitney. For a hundred years, Hollywood filmmakers have come here shooting hundreds of films. It's here the American Westerns came to life. Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, John Wayne, The Lone Ranger, and a thousand others turned this backdrop into the dreams of generations of kids. Just the, the panoramic here and that shot from Gladiator when he leaves Germany and is heading back to the, coming home. That's where that was shot, is out there in that area there. And in Lone Pine, well, the sunrise just completes the picture. When it's really clear like this, it'll go bang. And uh, so be ready. The group just pauses. And then it happens. And look at that, boom, all of a sudden, somebody turned the light on. Western music artist, Buffalo Brian, joins Larry on this morning journey. You know, the Eastern Sierra is just, look at that. See that, how that, that just changed like in 30 seconds. It's a sunrise no one ever forgets. With my rifle, my pony, no more cows to be roping, no more strays. Will I see around the bend? She'll be waiting for my rifle, my pony, and me. Just my rifle. This tradition was started by a Hollywood legend. The Sunrise Tour started because of and with John Mitchum. He was a character actor appearing in scores of movies and television, shows like Gunsmoke, The Waltons, Little House on the Prairie, and he's remembered fondly as Clint Eastwood's partner in Dirty Harry. Why do they call you Dirty Harry? Well, that's one thing about our Harry. Doesn't play any favorites. Harry hates everybody. But like his brother Robert, he loved the westerns. And the Alabama Hills, all that rich history, fired the poet in John. Just the greatest bon vivant troubadour storyteller, all around good guy that you'd ever want to meet. He'd hold court at the Dow Villa Hotel for hours and hours and hours, especially with a good gallon jug of some Chianti or something. He'd say, well, we should be out in the hills when the sun's coming up. <laughs> and that's how it started. My father first started this tour, he would try and get me to come up. And I said that he was crazy, that people wouldn't get up at 4.30 in the morning and pay extra money just to listen to him talk when they just have to buy him a glass of wine the night before at the Dow. And when we finally did it, and there were busloads of people, he just smiled and winked and said, I told you so. Larry and John became fast friends, and so this wonderful piece of Americana was slowly handed from one generation to the next. So when he passed away, it fell to me. Just an absolutely great way to start your day. If you don't get a big in the morning, watching the sun hit the top of Mount Whitney, there's something wrong with you. In the early days, the stars like John would be up here. Now, it's the next generation. We drive up to Mammoth, our bishop, you know, we never really stopped here, but he'd point out that, you know, he rode through those canyons, you know, got shot over there. And so to be here now and actually feel like he was walking around here or riding around here is pretty neat. I saw a picture of him in a curio store up here and he was with another guy and they were getting to go fishing. I've never seen an expression like that on my dad's face before. 
utter happiness. He was so thrilled to be up here. I tried to buy the picture and the guy wouldn't sell it to me. He loved it up here. So he loves this place. And you do too, don't you? It's where he is. It's, it's where his heart it was. And with the light racing down the backside of the Sierra Nevada, the cowboy poet, no doubt fortified by a bit of John Mitchum in his heart, takes us back through the years and the lessons about life born in these rocks so long ago. I fell in love with horses long before I ever learned to ride or drive a team. I fell in love watching them all in the Saturday parade, galloping across the silver screen. They thrilled me more than the stories of the sparkling movie queens, and they always took my breath away, and I'd ride them in my dreams. Trigger was always my favorite. He stole my heart and all of Roy's big scenes. He looked to me to be the happiest horse that I had ever seen. And Champion kept Gene in the saddle, packed him everywhere. When the going was tough and the chips were down, well, Champ would get him there. And Coco and Rex, they were such an awesome team, whether they were in a song or in a fight, with flying mane and flashing spurs, they were rhythm and dynamite. And Randolph Scott rode the sorrel horse with the flaxen mane and tail, and Flicka was always in out of trouble and putting the bad guys back in jail. Hi, oh, Silver, and get em up, Scout. Those two were the best of friends. The Silver Steed and the Pinno Pony, riding off to where that trail never ends. I knew they'd ride off together at the end of every show in a cloud of dust and a hearty, Hi, oh, Silver! Hi, oh, Silver! And I ached so much to go. Jimmy Stewart and Pie, Ben Johnson riding steel, White Cloud and Eddie Dean. Gosh, there were so many great ones galloping across that silver screen. When I was in school, I'd have gotten an A in all my courses if they'd have taught me lessons talking about the horses. Wellington at Waterloo, I can hear those cavalry sabers rattle, and I knew that a big old Andalusian horse named Marengo carried Napoleon in the battle. And Alexander the Great and Bucephalus conquered all the world that they could see. And General Leon Traveler, way down south in Dixie. I tried making my own history of sorts, riding the neighbor's horse full tilt through the apple trees. Not a clue as to what to do. Two barnyard escapees. <laughs> dodging limbs and jumping logs and holding on with everything I had, scratched and skinned and knocked out cold. Boink. <laughs> that wasn't so bad. A teenage summer in California. Riding star through the orange groves almost every day. And knowing that this hoofbeat pulse in my heart would never go away warm sunny days and cool soft nights memories as clear as yesterday asking begging pleading mom mom can we stay can we stay but time and time and time to find where your trails will lead you to a girl a horse a sleeping want oh what love can do a rickety trailer and a hat full of hope and a trip to El Cajon, and a very long circle of the heart connected, a horse of my very own, a buckskin wish that took my dreams and made them a reality. Now Trigger and Champ, all the gang, they all belong to me. Buckskin gold and a mane black as coal and a body built for speed and staying. He packed my dreams and my memories and my schemes. Taught me life was for laughing and playing. He was my silver screen part. And with the world is our yard, he took me to the magic of the ride. And every day we would ride away, he taught me patience and try and pride. He fought me, he taught me, he bucked me, caught me, showed me how to figure things out. We started as strangers and shared all the dangers, all the spills, the thrills, the doubts. 
See, on that horse, I was Roy, Rex, Gene, Hoppy, Ben, and the Lone Ranger, and we would ride with the wind, and I learned how to spin, and I never once felt any danger. But I did feel truth and love and concentration, and I learned what commitment is worth. And in his presence, I truly was the happiest guy on this earth. We rode together in all kinds of weather. He packed my ego for over 20 years. And through sun and storm, my life was made warm, seeing the trail through the bandit's ears. I'm a Poco Tibio. <laughs> he was more than a little hot. I never found his bottom. No quit was in his soul. Snorting and blowing, never thought of slowing. Come on, Buck, let's roll. Be it of mountain trail or a fancy parade or a child's very first ride. His heart and mind and rhythm and rhyme. He knew how to laugh without hurting my pride. Just get in there and mix it up, he'd say. Don't worry too much how it comes out. You do your best, I'll do the rest. And did we leave him with something to talk about? Bandit old pal, I keep you ever in my heart. Just like all my pals from the silver screen. For with you, we played every part and we starred in every scene. And now when I think back at Roy and Trigger and Gene and Champ and all my pals who were part of the Silver Screen Dreams, I'll add to the credits, me and you, Bandit Old Pal, thank you for making this kid's Silver Screen Dreams come true. Woo! Back in the saddle again. Out where a friend is a friend Where the long horn can feed A lonely gym some wheat I'm back in the saddle again Riding the range once more Toting my old 44 Where you sleep out every night And the only long is right Back in the saddle and this is the sing-along part. A whoopie tie, I oh, rocking to and fro. Back in the saddle again. Whoopie tie, I hey, I go my way. Back in the saddle again. Take it away, Larry. Back in the saddle again. 